So let's go back to the beginning. You were born in rural Ethiopia. You were just an ordinary child. What did you do? What did your family do? What was the, the community like when you were born way back 82, some 82 years ago? Yes, I do. I was born in Northwest Ethiopia, 1931. That was the year I was born. And uh, the place I was born was called the First Meda, a village actually, just rural village. Nothing special about it. But then, uh, when I look back, my childhood days and what had transpired in those days, I could sense that there was the hand of God leading, guiding my life. This is how I feel. And there are many, many indications that God was in my life. Now your question is how I was born, how I grew up, and the conditions and situations in the country at that time when I was just a little boy. You know, I am the uh, third child in my family and the first boy. The two born before me were girls and the fourth one was also who was born after me was a girl but uh, in my family there were four of us unfortunately the first born died when she, was, when she was just young about eight years of age so i didn't even get to know her i just heard about her the second one who is three years older than i am is still alive she is very strong, physically well fit, and uh, I don't think of all my siblings, there is anyone to whom I am so closely attached as my older sister. Well, there was a time in our family when there were only two, the two of us children with my father and mother. And that brought, brought a very close relationship between the two of us. So, my older sister was a rabbi chu, older Selassie. I think you know her, uh, a mother of seven. Mm -hmm. She is a very charming lady and she has very wonderful children. And uh, that shows part of the family. And then my mother died. In fact, she died before I knew her. Uh, I remember I have just a very few recollections about her. Uh, generally, I remember that she was tall. This, this have, I, 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 I remember you have in my mind about her. And uh, ab apart from that, I don't remember much because, because she died when I, was about, when I was about three or three and a half years old. Mm -hmm. Around that time, she died. And after she died, my father got remarried, second wife. And uh, not long after that, the war came, the Ethiop Ethiopian and Italian war. And my father was a soldier, so he had to go to the front. And my stepmother, my older sister and me, and me, three of us were left behind in the home. My uncle, on my mother's side, was very closely attached to our family. When he found out, he, he was not living in our village, he was living in another village far, far away from us. When he heard that my father had gone to the war front, he came to our home. And he said, I'm going to take this child with me. He said he has lost his mother. Now his father has gone to war. He may or, or not may come back. In case he doesn't come back, I will rear him up as my child. I'll take care of him. Mm -hmm. But if he does come back, then I'll bring back the child when, he, when the father comes back. So he took me 
And I stayed with them seven months while my father, my father was in the front fighting. Something happened when I was living with them, which I shall never forget. For the first time in my life, I saw an airplane. We were playing just outside the house and we heard a sound. It's a terrific sound and we didn't know what to make of it. We looked down and we couldn't see anything, but there was some sound over here. And we were terrified. We started screaming, started running, but then a lady who was there at home said, look at that, look at that. And she pointed out there was something flying up in the air. We don't know what it was, but something flying. That was the aeroplane. For the first time in my life, I saw aeroplane. But of course, then after that, these planes were coming back again and again, bombing villages and other cities and towns. I got to know, get used to them. Then we started, oh, well, the lift comes, the plane comes. But that was uh, during the time I stayed with my uncle for seven months. After seven months, the news came that my father had come home alive with all his friends. And immediately I went to my uncle and I said to him, take me home. I can't stay here overnight. Take me home today. He took me back home. I met my father. I was so happy. I was so pleased. Because I had lost my mother and now he was the only one I had. And I was afraid that I might lose him too. Mm -hmm. But I was so glad to see him back. Now, soon after my father came back, I was about five and five, half, five and a half, uh, about five and a half years old. And uh, very fortunate in our village, there was a school. Which is unusual. Very unusual. Very unusual for those days. Very unusual. No schools in the, in the whole country, the whole district, region, no schools. But in my village, there was a school. It was established by the missionaries, by the Seventh-day Adventist missionaries. Uh, I might have a chance to speak about that later on, but for the, for the time being, my father said, now I have to go to school. I went to school. I had two teachers. I come to Aino, and I come to school. They taught me the, the Amharic alphabets, mm -hmm. and I was able to read. But the impression that those men, those two men, and my father gave me in life are everlasting. I shall never forget them. Reading, writing, anybody can teach you. But nobody can teach what those men have taught me. That is, they are the ones who gave me the foundation of my faith. They were the ones who introduced me to Jesus Christ. My father, a very godly man, very simple farmer, but he had two books in his house, I remember. One was the New Testament, and the other one was Steps to Christ in America. Those two books he had. And every morning before going to his farm, he would take out his New Testament, read and pray. And listen to that man praying. It's not praying, it's just talking to God face to face. This is how I felt. He was just talking to God. So I learned the true science of prayer from my father. My heart was touched in my young years that he spoke to God as though he was seeing him face to face. That's what I learned from him. And those two men, Alaga Matwainor and Alaga Mangusu, they also were very godly men. So they were my primary introducers to the life of Christ. And for this, I thank them very much. Now, God has helped me to remain 
Christian all the rest of my life, all because I think, all because they have laid a very solid foundation. And I'm very grateful for that. Now, I have, I have a follow-up question to that. But before we get there, something happened that interrupted that uh, schooling that you had started. And you went back to what children only do yeah. uh, as, as a matter of, of uh, uh, tradition. So what, what did you, were you a shepherd? Well, uh, at that point in time, the Ethiopian government was defeated. The Italians were invading the whole country. They were occupying the country. And normal functioning was disrupted. Schooling included. No more schooling. And then, uh, the invaders came right into my village. They burned all the houses. The church, which was also the school, was burned down at the same time. We had to hide in the caves, mountains, the bushes, wherever we could find. So normal life was completely disrupted. But little by little, we started coming back. Before coming back to the normal life, what I saw in those days, what I witnessed in those days was a terrible situation, absolutely terrible. Because there was no government in Ethiopia in those days. The Italians, although they occupied the cities, but they were no government in the countryside. The countryside was without any governor, without anybody in charge. And this gave an opportunity for the enemies of the church to try to destroy us completely because we were Seventh-day Adventists. My village, the whole village, is a Seventh-day Adventist village. And there were also other villages who were Seventh-day Adventists. And so the surrounding people thought that was a very good opportunity for them to kill out Adventism in that area. So they invaded our village and they took everything we had. Whatever was left of the Italians, whatever we had rebuilt was again taken away by the people who are living around about us. And it's not only that, it's both the Italians invaded us and the surrounding community invaded us. And our lives were not secured at any moment. Many people have lost their lives at that time, many of our people. And so we were living in a chaotic situation. Mm -hmm. It was a time of lawlessness, a time of persecution, a time of great confusion. Mm -hmm. you, you had just to live from day to day. You didn't know what was coming next. So this was the kind of situation that resulted and that's what drove me back to a life of a farmer. No more schooling. I had to live as a farmer, assisting my father. And that was life I was living in. Just to, uh, to clarify the historical context of the Italian occupation in Ethiopia. The Italians had designs to, to colonize Ethiopia as early as the 19th century. In fact, there was an epic battle between the Italians and the Ethiopians in 1896 in northern Ethiopia, which Ethiopia decisively won. Mm -hmm. And years later, in 1935, Mussolini wanted to come back and avenge that uh, disgraceful de defeat, as, as they felt it was. And, and they were more than prepared with mustard, gas, airplanes, tanks, you name it. That was the, the time you were talking about. That, that happened during your, your, your childhood. Now, I want to, uh, to, to ask the, the, uh, 
northern Ethiopia in general and, and the area where you were born in particular was predominantly Ethiopian Orthodox Christian Bashi uh, with a few Muslims and some um, um, uh, Ethiopian Jews uh, in the area as well. My question is how in the world did Adventism get established in your remote village in northwest Ethiopia? <laughs> 